people in WordPress will use um, the Epoch, but with a time zone offset on the seconds since January 1st, 1970 UTC with time zone offset. Why? Like that defeats the purpose of having like this, this single number we can look at. And it's so dramatically different than any other date time stamp. When you look at it, you go, oh, yeah, this is a, a date and it's just like a series of integers. I know that it's Unix Epoch, second since Unix, Unix Epoch. And anyway, here we are. Welcome to Binary JS. Uh, time gets the best of us in the end. It's just how it always works. And we're time is hard. Oh God, time is fucking miserable. Time is fucking miserable. Uh, but it's Monday, arbitrarily. Is it? Yep. And it's morning for some of us and afternoon for some of us. There's only three of us here, so I don't know how that works. There's somebody that's in two time zones. It's uh, hard. it's Stuff's Friday hard. if 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 our listeners are listening. Oh, crap. And, and we hope yeah. that yeah, our yeah. listeners do listen. Although it could be any day, really, because that's just the day that... that that the podcast is released. Right. We're, we're pretty, that's a pretty hefty assumption, actually, that people are are downloading and listening to the episode the day it comes out. I think well, they might. If, they, if they're here, they've liked and subscribed, which is all we ask. Go to binary and leave a review on, on, like on and iTunes and, and whatever. Send us your Russian spam. Are we are we blocking Russian spam now? Are we, is that, uh, where, do we, where do we come down on that? Uh, I don't, I mean, I haven't done anything different. Uh, we did get some Russian spam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My we... ninja slime dot are you? Well, okay. I guess we're reading it on the, what, internet. what I, I mean, <laughs> answers that question. Doesn't it? <laughs> um, my, I'm sorry. You say my ninja slime. My yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yep. almost mad minute. that I don't have that domain. Yep. That's the one. My ninja slime. Uh, I'm just curious. I'm to to translate. Yes. What a lovely game. We were playing the other night with the kids and uh, the word was like simple or simply or something like that. And we actually had like a card version to help the kids instead of writing down your words. And it's great. Anyway, somebody played lobsters. So simply lobsters. And I was like, I bet that domain exists. Um, it doesn't, but there's a company called simply lobsters. So if you need lobsters, don't go to simplylobsters.com, but Google Simply Lobsters and go to their Facebook page because I made a website. Early 2000s, and uh, that's how you find businesses around the world now. I made a website. Meta, not Facebook, Meta. Back in when I was freelancing I for some uh, East Coast food company yeah. that specialized, but like they they sold like... It was like a distributor of like clam chowder and and like lobster oh, bisque and, and all all that sort of seafoody stuff. Mm. I don't remember what they're called, but I do remember using the font lobster. Smart. How could you not? I mean, yeah. literally, how could you not? Uh, it turns out that uh, my ninja slime has something to do with land surveying projects. Hmm. Yeah, naturally. Obviously. What else? What else would it? If you go to um, Eastern Canada or like Halifax, in this case, they have like in the airport, they have a big like lobster tank and you can get a lobster and like carry it on with you <laughs> on the plane. Wait, what? Because they're carry... known for lobster, right? So like, it's like a thing, but like they give you this, they basically like you pick the lobster and then they put it in like this cardboard case for you. So it's like very fresh. Um, but I was kidding that we should just get a pet lobster. <laughs> Do, they make, carry it home with us. Do they make um, good pets? Do we I know? don't know because I, I was uh, I was vetoed on the idea of us carrying a lobster home. <laughs> oh, I would guess that they would probably not be overly happy living in a tank for their entire life. No, well, they'd probably be happier doing that than they would be as dinner. It's but I don't fair. think anyone's happy when they get stuffed into the overhead compartment. So, <laughs> <laughs> is that they go in? They go in the the cabin. Yeah. Oh. Now I want a really ca- crappy Netflix documentary about like a lobster, like reality show. Someone that like trains lobsters. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> what did we watch recently? I started watching. 
the Bruce Brothers on Netflix, which I will recommend you avoid. Uh, I had a lot of nights to like. Always appreciate a wait, non-recommendation. Wait, the Blues yeah. Brothers? Like the no, original? Oh. Bruce. B-R- Bruce. I think oh, it's something okay. like that. In any case, don't bother looking for it. It's dumb. <laughs> I was excited. I'm like, oh, here's a comedy show about craft beer industry I worked in. I might find some humor in it. Nope. It's just raunchy, terrible, like wiener jokes, pretty much. <sighs> my my new that's thing. what you're looking for. My new thing uh, that I've been and watching a lot of uh recently um partially because i've moved on to um from like critical role uh and other uh dnd podcasts to dimension 20 which is the the dnd podcast that's done by college humor yeah um, why why have you moved on because there's uh, because i finished content? i finished things oh okay yeah. that's yeah. okay um i mean I, there's still there's still critical role. i'm not fully caught up on season three but i'm watching that, that with aaron so um, for other things. Uh, yeah. So, so, so dimension 20. So I've been watching, so then, you know, obviously because I'm watching something on college humor, uh, YouTube wants to recommend other college humor things. So, um, we've been watching, I've been watching and then I've, I've subjected Aaron to this. Uh, they have a, uh, a, a, a bit, a, a, uh, I don't know, a series, I guess, uh, called breaking news network. Uh, and the premise is that there is a teleprompter and they don't know what is on the teleprompter before they read it and they cannot laugh or smile. Um, so the whole thing is just like ridiculous fake news, like it's just ridiculous stuff to try to get them to laugh as much as possible. And then uh, they give an award to the person who 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 broke uh, the most times at the end. Um, so that that is the thing that I've been watching a lot of recently. It's it's pretty good. We watched a show called Hyperdrive that was pretty cool, where people from all over the world bring their cars and drive like a like they're hyper, like a I don't know, like a race course, but like they drift and stuff, and it was entertainment for six or ten episodes. I don't know. That's all we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing substantial there. Mindless, mindless. Aaron's also what found this uh, this YouTube channel that um, called Man Shorts, uh, and they do uh, they do D and D like f- fake D and D skits that are like themed. So like they'll have Dungeons and Dragons the Gangsta Edition and Dungeons and Dragons the Canada Edition and Dungeons and Dragons the like whatever like you know Mall Edition, um, and and they're pr- they're pretty. They're pretty good. The, the The amazing thing about those is how many of them there are. I mean, they're like five, <laughs> five or ten minutes, maybe max. But like, there's just so many, just so many. That's the the beast of YouTube. Yeah. Oh, YouTube. I've been watching a lot of Gotham chess on YouTube. Levy Levy Rosman does like chess videos, and they are. He's really gifted at what he does. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. He makes it exciting and fun. And it, if I were to ever um, do like uh, coding content of some sort, I would use him as a model for how I would approach it. Because it's encouraging, but also like sometimes just like, this is bad and here's why. (laughs) And that's okay too. It's important. It's fun. I noticed that you haven't gotten your Atlantis poster framed. No, but now I know where the frame place is. So little by little. <laughs> as long as there's steps. still baby steps happening. They are. They are. I was even thinking like, wow, Monday I could roll it up and go in and be like, hey, I need this frame. But then I was like, oh, but I have to measure the thing that's going over top of. That's too big of a bite to take at once. Yeah. I'll get there. Or maybe not. I probably will. I actually have no idea what to expect as far as like a, a quote either price wise. Depends on if it's a custom size or if it's yeah just a normal frame size. Yeah. I don't know what normal sizes are. Yeah, I had a custom frame done a while ago. I did, I did one of those things, you know, those stupid uh, Instagram ads uh, that are like highly relevant. Nope. <laughs> uh, one of them was like, get a star chart 
of like a particular date of mm. like in oh. a particular location. Um, like so, so I got, I got that for basically the, the party, the night of the party when Aaron and I, uh, essentially hooked up and was the, what led to like our future relationship. Uh, You're now 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would, that would have been, um, that would have been 20, like. That would have been 21 and a half years ago. Because hmm. we Dang. were together, we were together for, we were, yeah, we were together for a year before we got married. What is time? Yeah, time. <laughs> uh, typically we the all, show, uh, typically the way the show time. works is 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 that uh, Allison has a topic and Gary and I don't know anything about the topic. And then we, we talk about, it until, we talk about it until we know what uh, the topic is and, and until Zoom cuts us off. Uh, do we have a topic today? We do have a topic today. We might have, I'm, it's on my list, but I have this weird little note, like scribble next to it. So I don't know if the scribble means you use this already or. <laughs> There's only the one means. way to find out. So we're bringing it to the table because I have no idea. And I seems like a good topic. How, how disappointing will it be if you bring it to the table and we're like, oh, we have done that, but we have no idea what well, it we means. We still don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's also fine. <laughs> Oh it's yeah, fun. sure. From where you're sitting, that's fine. I'm only a little stressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the topic is Vermilion border. Vermilion. No, border. we've not done that. I can say that with confidence and I hope that I'm not wrong. <laughs> I, I, I did a quick Google and it didn't seem to come up with the, the episode. So just found a Russian website, which in hindsight, perhaps we should have read that those messages a lot more closely because I've seen what was coming. Um, vermilion border. Vermilion, I believe, is a texture, right? Like a fabric texture? Or a color. Mm. What really? color is vermilion? Green? <laughs> <laughs> wow, the, the confidence. So like, what's something that's, what would you, like something that you're like, look at that. Vermilion thing. The vermilion toad? <laughs> vermilion <laughs> frog? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I love that those oh. are the green things that you're naming. <laughs> Well, I mean, like the I, I guess I, I, frog, frog is better than toad because toads are, are typically like larger and um, like more browner. like sort of, yeah, browner. Um, and, and, and frogs come in a wide variety of colors, including like neon green. So like it could be like there's a there's a much wider reign of, range of greens uh, to uh, to hit with a vermilion frog. We don't have tree frogs here. In, in, there's in probably a lot of things you don't have, Gary, in North well, Carolina as compared to Florida. I don't miss them as much. But the, the tree frogs that used to like park on the window, you know, and you could, were, I miss those. You'll have to find the other animals that, that are. Oh, we have plenty more. Yeah. There are so many birds here. So many birds. I mean, not to say that there weren't birds in Florida. I'm sure that there were lots of birds in Florida. There were lots of birds in Florida. I believe there are more birds here. But it probably depends on where you go. Yeah, I'm sure that there are a lot of birds in Florida. And so a vermilion border is a green border. It is a border that you can cross because no. because no. the the uh, there is a treaty in place that allows for open borders. Is that if a it was if it was a crimson a border, a million border, if it was a crimson border, you would not be allowed to cross. They would stop you at the border. Oh, it's French. It's French for green. Yeah, that's helpful. You looked it up? No, I didn't look it up. <laughs> I was just totally trusting you. I, I can't wait to find out that it has absolutely nothing to do with color. <laughs> Vermilion. I, I believe it's, it's, it's like a uh, like a rough satin texture. Just so I know that I spelled it correctly. Yeah, Vermilion is V-E-R-M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Yeah, it can either be spelled with two L's or one L. Oh. 
<laughs> like that changes a lot about how you <laughs> wow, approach it. Wow, that's resounding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we we both were like, oh, but and border is B O R D E R. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that would be funny if that was the that was the red herring where I'm like, ha ha, they'll never guess. <laughs> it's B-O-A-R-D-E-R. Border. It's a border. It's a B-O-R-E-D-E-R. green person living in a hostel. Yeah. The Vermilion border. It's actually, that's actually the name of a 1952 movie uh, starring, uh, uh, you know, Martin Cusack. John What's Cusack's, the name? What? John Cusack's uh, estranged father. Gary's on board. <laughs> it's I'll watch the Vermilion it, sure. Border. It's it's actually still like a film noir, uh, hard boiled detective. Oh, love that about uh, you know uh, uh, a Russian spy, as it turns out. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> I um. I uh, was sort of, we had a family thing, and so uh, it sort of prevented us from recording last week. And uh, anyway, everybody's reunited on Friday. And so usually I cook on Sunday, but I was like still recovering from the mayhem of a week and a half of uh, not having Rondo here. And uh, I'm like, I'm just not up for it. So I got one of those enormous, like family size mac and cheese things that you put in the oven. Um, I don't know what family they expect to feed with that. Uh, I, I mean, like we too we much or not enough. Yeah, no, I was gonna oh, say I was like too, too much. much. Okay. Too much. Could go either we way. A third of it. I like, like, third my of it. family devoured it within minutes. <laughs> no, no, like we ate a third of it, and it, I mean, it's like pounds of mac and cheese. Jeez. Um, did you just have that, or did you like put something yeah. else with it? No, I also did like a broccoli casserole. So okay. super fancy there. Uh, more cheese, uh, yeah. breadcrumbs. Sounds delicious. I'm I'm all in on this comfort food. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Rhonda and I also had a salad because. And um, but yeah, I don't remember. I mean, I don't remember what this thing cost. It was not that much. I mean, like, maybe ten bucks. But I mean, like, it was it was like like grabbing like cinder blocks and putting them into the oven, you know, cold cinder blocks that. That bacon. somehow turned into food at the end. Yeah. After and bacon. now you can take the leftover mac and cheese and roll them in breadcrumbs and fry them and have like mac and cheese That's balls. So Ooh. <laughs> I, I actually had some for lunch uh, today, but yeah, I, I was trying to think of what I can do with it. I may, I may kick around the idea of uh, of that coating in breadcrumbs. And I mean, you could probably shove it into just about anything else. Mac and cheese is pretty, uh, it's, I know it's, there's, yeah. or you can make them like patties, like latte. Cause mm. if you don't have like, yeah. I'm going to go get a little ice, like the little like ice cream scooper. And there's a, a um, in that before toss them into the, uh, some oil and frying them. One of the, mm. the vegan like diner burger joints, uh, here, um, has uh, they name all their burgers like cutesy names? So they have the Ian McKay, uh, which those of you who don't know, Ian McKay was the lead singer of uh, Minor Threat and Fugazi, big punk dude. Anyway, the Ian McKay includes uh, mac and cheese on uh, on the burger, so mm-hmm. you could always put it on as a, as a burger topping. The condiment, what, yeah. Um, what are your favorite um, like meat alternative patties? We do a lot of Morningstar. Morningstar, is that it? Yeah. I when I'm in the States, Morningstar. <laughs> There's a um I find them kind of uninspired. Like it's Yeah, like, they are. I you know, we have never really been super uh excited about most of the um vegan non meat patties. Mm-hmm. Um so frequently uh I just I just make them like I have like I don't know okay four or five different recipes for various different types of patties. Um, there is one kind that we tried uh, that was all right. Uh, that was like I don't remember the name. It was like Doctor something or other that comes in an old box where well, they all come in boxes, right? A uh, little square box. It was like four. Um, it's not Morningstar, but it's something something else. I, I will find it because I have some in the freezer and I'll put it in the show notes. 
Um, but like, yeah, I think that I think that if we're actually trying to do burger burgers and I'm not making it, then we probably just do Beyond Burgers. Mm -hmm. Beyond Sausage are okay. Yeah, I like Beyond Sausage. But like also I haven't had my barometer for like what things are supposed to taste like is wildly off. Yeah. Because it's been it's right? been 20 oh. years since I've had it. So I'm yeah. like, I guess. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I, looking for katie you know that's like, that's for real so. um i we we pass by these burger joints that like you know i don't know pump the smell of the burgers in the air like around so you, know, you can smell it for blocks and it's like yeah that smells good and like i don't know beyond burger tastes like that tastes like that smells i oh, guess i think so <laughs> i think so yeah i think beyond burger is good but sometimes like she she doesn't want that she wants like yeah morning star but morning star does good bacon Mm hmm yep we have that from time to time mm -hmm. uh and then we did sausage and we did sausage gravy because that's like a great mm. dinner like and um and it turned out okay the color was off but whatever yeah we also like, um it's not a meat substitute but we do like dehyd not dehydrated I guess I don't know. It's like baked mushrooms with liquid smoke and stuff, and it mm, kind of mm. it tastes savory and delicious. Mm -hmm. um, but like that's not like a substitute. It's just good. Yeah, it's good for everybody. <laughs> I did stuffed mushrooms for um, the Super Bowl. I did like a bunch of weird stuff, uh, and I thought the mushrooms were great. I can't wait to do more mushrooms, but nobody else really ate them, so. <laughs> yeah, so we have a texture thing though. People are people yeah. are iffy about mushrooms. Oh. We have a we have a really good breaded stuffed mushrooms recipe. I will say that you were right on mushrooms and the place where they like mm, the place where I had mushrooms that really I'll eat mostly anything. Texture doesn't really bother me. The place where I got closest to being like I can't eat it because of texture was in in uh, in Guangzhou, China. Some of the mushrooms they were like uh Oh, they were just so like slimy and like, mm, mm. it was really something, really something. Yeah, there's some there's some mushrooms that are mm -hmm. just like, hmm, maybe not, maybe not, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe that's not a thing that I want to eat. Oh yeah, and then when you add like a bunch of like weird sauce on top of it and uh, <laughs> a bunch of colors that are not normally colors I would eat. Oh yeah, it was a vermilion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, vermilion yes. for sure. Yeah, obviously. I almost crossed the vermilion border after eating it. <laughs> When you think you want to eat something and then you cross the point of no return. That's the vermilion border. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's named also for the color of... Uh... Your, your face becomes as you're eating it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a much nicer uh, uh, and uh, more visually attractive uh, description of what happens uh, than what I was going to describe. I think it's blue, actually. Is it blue? It's blue. Do you, do you want real answers about what we're I do about? now? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I know this word, and I feel like blue popped into my I, head as we were talking about. So it. I can tell you, vermilion's a color. Yes, but it's neither green nor blue. Great, <laughs> it's red. Solid word. It's, it's, close, it's like a rust color. It's it's like a, a punchy red. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Punchy red. Yeah. Spilling that oh, vermilion. I don't know. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at swatches and they look bright. So they're not like yeah. brick dusty. Yeah. Okay. So the vermilion border. So then, so then it's the opposite. It's not the border that you can cross. Yes. It's the border that you cannot cross. <laughs> you cannot cross. <laughs> and and that goes along with that uh, point of no return thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if you pass the vermilion border, then, then no, I'm just bad thinking news. about food. I'm so hungry. <laughs> What, yeah. what is this, so welcome what is to the, binary jazz our food podcast what, so what's the actual <laughs> definition a uh, vermilion border do you want me to tell you i think so okay it's We're uh, early but i'm curious now <laughs> it's um the space between where your lips end and then the skin begins what <laughs> So like wow. if you look really closely at your face, there's a place where your lip distinctly Super ends. Super self-conscious of my lips now. Yeah, it's not, but your skin, it's like a different thing. There's no sweat glands. There's no, 
it's it's a different kind of tissue basically well i didn't think of that i never considered that there had to be like a transition point and that it had to have a name but there, <laughs> yeah obviously there must be it's a point where a lip stops becoming a lip so is there uh besides that very important uh signifier and description of what a vermilion border is is there some other sort of uh, tangential uh, significance to uh, the vermilion border is that like like for for those of us who wear makeup is that like a thing like you have to um, avoid or like don't cross the I guess you could cross, cross the vermilion you're really into the not crossing well I mean you know like well no because yeah. some people so if people say overline their lips they're often outlining the vermilion border okay see see I'm not I'm not I'm not wild like i know there's something there there's something all right um i have I some stupid shirt i have some stupid shit go ahead gary i wore this shirt to a meeting at some yeah. point recently and uh someone was like oh my daughter has the same shirt and grabbed their like two-year-old daughter held her up in like a little sweatshirt at with like spaghetti stains on the front and everything i mean i don't have spaghetti stains on this one or i didn't at the time i don't know either <laughs> I need to show that, uh, but but it was it was like a yeah that is actually the same shirt matching type moment yeah so I put it on this morning and immediately thought of that was like ah oh, all right this might does that up... make you not want to wear it or it it just seemed a little weird like a very judgmental like oh my daughter mm. has the same my shirt. daughter and has then, that same shirt yeah like, that is pretty well, I don't like shop I mean I. It's just a generic shirt. It's a, like red. But it's and... like a baseball tee. Like this is a common design. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now I need to, now I'm going to go on Amazon and buy like a bulk pack of ringer tees or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. Pick a number from one, between one and eight. Seven. Three. I heard a three, three and a seven. Okay. Three plus seven is 10 divided by two is five. That's how we're going to do that. We didn't, neither of us picked five. I know, but or you two. used three and seven is the difference. <laughs> There's two of you. But the one, difference between seven and three is four. Should I do yeah. four? I guess I'll do four. I, that seems like closer to consensus than like. All right, we're, we'll, gonna do, we'll do four. Add up your numbers and divide by whatever I want to pick the one that I chose. This is a very relevant uh, topic for binary jazz. Uh, this is <laughs> what does that even mean? Is it space or food? <laughs> this is how to D &D. add binary numbers. Oh no! Uh, oh. With with pictures, which obviously uh, <laughs> maybe I should maybe I should maybe uh, we should rethink this. <laughs> maybe I should share my screen so that the pictures can be uh, can be shared. Uh, <laughs> Um, the binary number system works similarly to base 10 decimal system we are used to using, except that it is base 2, which means it's completely different. Oh, good. We're at WikiHell again. <laughs> uh, binary numbers can be added just as decimal numbers, and the, while the process is familiar, adjusting the base 2 system can make it a confusing en endeavor. It is helpful, then, to have a complete understanding of how place value works in the binary number system. Uh, all right. There's some. There's a. There's a picture of like breaking the number down into four pieces of the ones and the twos and the fours and the eights because that's how you do binary. Uh, and it says draw a place value chart with two rows and four columns. The ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place. There's also a sixteens place and a thirty twos place because you know you're obviously getting this in your head, right? Like there's you know you can go up. You can go up to thirty two digits. Yeah, well, yeah, no worries. Uh, write a random binary number at the bottom row of your chart. Comes next. Uh, e. In the in the binary system, the only digits used are one and zero. For example, you might yes. write in the eighth place in one uh, one in the eighth place, one in the fourth place, zero in the twos place, and one in the ones place. I don't know off the top of my head what that is. I guess I would if I looked at it. Eight uh, plus I'm four is twelve plus the one. Bar. Yeah. Yeah. Do we make How you don't angry attract or something, a Pisces Chris? man as a Sagittarius woman? Hey, hey, we can put those on the the you know put them on the list for next time. That was what does the seven. cherry emoji mean? <laughs> 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 these are all these are all new pages. Not How featured. to teach your pet not to be scared of the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> Wait, what? Where's that? It's at the very top. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Juniper isn't scared. She just wants to attack it. Um, uh, step three, hey. interpret the ones place. Are they, is this just like the same image every time? Oh, no, they're uh, actually, okay. They are, okay, they're changing back. it. I'm still distracted. What does it mean when he texts you good morning every day? <laughs> <laughs> How to dry your clothes quickly. Um, uh, for example, in the binary number 1101, there is a 1 in the 1 place, so the value is of that number is 1, obviously, because it's the 1 place, right? That's the, the Counting up to 1 is the easiest uh, number to count to in binary. I'll say that. Uh, right? No. No, I would say 0 is. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not really counting if, you're, if it's zero, but okay. Uh, step four, interpret the twos place. If there's a zero in the twos place, uh, the value is zero. Right? Right? Got it? <laughs> if there's a one in this the twos place, <laughs> the value is two. Wait, if there's a one, the value is two? What are we How talking about? How many steps are there? <laughs> there's like 12. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just assumed this, that we were going to like four. A multi scroll <laughs> advertisement or something and be able to get closer to the end. But uh, Step five, interpret five. the fours place. Uh, step six, interpret the eights place. Step seven, oh, uh, oh, part two. Oh, whoa. What's interesting is that they're holding a WikiHow pin. <laughs> part two, adding binary numbers using place value. Uh, set up the problem vertically and add the digits in the ones place. Uh, so this, this is what I do every week when I come when I figure out what the episode is. Is I but it's easy because I just add. But one. we should stop it because this is madness. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, this is. is episode. Uh, no, that's not the right one. Uh, one zero zero one one zero one zero, which is one more than the last episode of one zero zero one one zero zero one. I don't know what well, those are. Let's do. Oh well, we, we okay. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> I was gonna say we can figure out what it is, but I I don't even actually want to do that. And I love that kind of stuff. This <laughs> Wiki, Wiki Hell article has made me so bored with binary, and it's actually very <laughs> exciting and fun. But I'm what I'm wondering about is obviously there's like, um, it's binary. We could do base three. We're used to base 10. There's hexadecimal, which is base 16. Is, are there counting systems that are like, like I want like base 0. 0.5. So oh. like, so no, like, you don't. If you saw 3.5, it would actually be seven. No. Yes. No. Can you imagine that in no. the context of. Set the problem vertically and add the digits in the ones place. <laughs> Since you're only <laughs> adding two digits, the, pro the possible sum is either Everything zero, one, or two. Using Wait, how could there be two in binary? There's not. You carry the one. It becomes a zero and you carry the one. Yeah, you carry the one. Right. Yeah. Uh, add the digits in the two's place. Add the digits in the four's place. And then the, the phrase keep adding order digits of in place value until you order reach of your final answer. Base 10, that's like a big deal. Is an order of magnitude something that can be applied in binary? Like if it's an order of magnitude in binary, like who cares? I mean, who cares for a lot of things? <laughs> Part three adding multiple binary numbers by pairing ones. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Are pears the best canned fruit? What's the best canned fruit? Um, so it, it, the community Q&A. Uh, what is the, what, well, what is the basic addition? Is one of the questions. This person's just basically succinctly. This, this person just read the entire article and still like, In what? one line. <laughs> <laughs> um then we have we, this is me why do we need binary numbers <laughs> <laughs> how do i solve one 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 plus one 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 plus one 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 um you uh, you read the article and how to do it um why are you doing this to us <laughs> yeah it's like we've done something <laughs> wrong like we've hurt you somehow <laughs> So like, I thought oh, when we, we started this, this is going to be like a short little thing. Uh, where's, why do we need binary numbers? Uh, yeah, okay. All right, this, I'm this done. Is no, no answer. <laughs> Just keep going. Because <laughs> uh, this, is, this is valuable content for our, our listener. I'm so sorry, dear listener. Are you getting paid listener. by WikiHell? Is that the deal? No. <laughs> Are you in the WikiHealth staff or something now? No, no, I'm not. 
Um, but yes. I can, I can put the uh, how to attract Sagittarius man to the <laughs> to get to later pile. <laughs> if if, uh, if that is uh, a request, I don't think that it is. <laughs> What is what is it? What does it mean? Wait, it says how to. What does it? Oh no! But how to is the type. I guess. <laughs> what does it mean when he texts you good morning every day? It means he's wishing you good morning. Like let's yeah. call it. Don't read too much into it. Guys send good morning texts when they like you. A guy might text first thing to let you know you're on his mind. <laughs> his face, we're both like. <laughs> I mean, I've said good morning to many people that I don't actually like. Yeah, same. Uh, is it good to text, text every day? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, tips for texting him back. Tell him how happy you are to hear from him. Type, enter, <laughs> done. <laughs> Tell him you hope he has a great day. These are really tame. But what if you I... don't hope he has a good day? <laughs> That well, is, I think you should is... be honest. I hope that you have a miserable day. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, you can stop reading the WikiHell article, Wiki Hell article tomorrow when he doesn't text you. Have a good day. <laughs> stop texting so... me good morning. <laughs> I hope you have a horrible day. <laughs> uh, so the thing that you did not uh, get to see, uh, which would have been number five, was how to be weird. So because you chose number five or number four, as the difference between seven and three, you didn't. We didn't do. Uh, we didn't do how to be weird. We've got that covered. We wrote <laughs> sure that, that article. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that WikiHell can bring anything to the table here for me. I I think that it's always good to learn new things that WikiHow is here to tell us all about. Oh. Like binary edition. Hey, our listeners. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.